Okay, it is actually time for this A to Z mini reworks. My thoughts, ideas, changes, and so on, and so forth. That is the way that it must be. I am sorry. <laughs> yes, this is technically a day late, but at the same time, you know, just happens. <laughs> Okay, so the damage is, yes, physical when it comes to Jace, the Defender of Tomorrow. The Defender of Tomorrow. That's kind of a cool name, but not really. Eh. Physical damage, this is true. Style is mostly auto attack. Slightly a bit, hmm. Ah. Honestly, I'd maybe even say he's more abilities because, yeah, I'd say he's pretty reasonable with his auto attacks. Early game, he's like 50-50 with his auto attack, so I'd say that's right. But late game, he's like 110% ability. <laughs> because if you get hit by anything that isn't his Q, you should be surprised. <laughs> Difficulty is 2. Yeah, that's understandable. I wouldn't give him a 3. He's not that hard. Damage 3. Utility 2. Mobility 2. He has no crowd control. And... Yeah, he's really not that tough. He can be one-shot, but at the same time, he is surprisingly tough. I'll give him that. So I kind of wish there was like four or something, because then I'd give him two marks and not the other two, but I wouldn't really say he's necessarily like a middle one. Okay, Jace is a brilliant inventor who has pledged his life to the defense of Piltover and its unyielding pursuit of progress. That's pretty nice. With his transforming Hextech hammer in hand, Jace uses his strength, courage, and considerable considerable blah, 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 considerable intelligence to protect his hometown. While revered throughout the city as a hero, he hasn't taken well to the attention heroism brings. Still, Jace's heart is in the right place, and even though who envy his natural skills are great, grateful for his protection in the city of progress. Wait, what? And even the oh, okay, who envy his natural okay, makes more sense now. <laughs> Abilities okay, hex tech capacitor. This is stupid. After casting transform, Jace gains forty percent movement speed, uh, and he can move through units for the next one point twenty five one yes one point twenty five seconds. So one second basically one and a quarter second, which really isn't long at all. Um, after casting transform, which is his alt, or not, what? Yeah, that is his alt. Why, it doesn't have the name of transform, though? Hmm. Whatever. Okay, then he has to the skies and shock blast. Hammer stance leaps to an enemy, dealing physical damage and slowing enemies. Uh, cannon stance. Fires an orb of electricity that de detonates upon an hitting an enemy or reaching the end of its path, dealing physical damage to all enemies hit. It is also a stupid amount of damage when paired with his W. And to be truthful, I think that his Q is a little stupid just because, it, yet again, it's a point-and-click dash that does damage. I don't, I don't like point-and-click abilities in general. I don't like point-and-click dashes, especially when they're the people dashing to you, which that's how point-and-click dash really works, but still. And then the fact that he also hits you <laughs> while doing this, it's like, why would you give someone such a dependable gap closer that also does damage? <laughs> it's like the same exact thing for Jax and Pantheon. It's like, I don't understand why you want someone to be able to just click on them and be able to jump to them with such ease. If anything, I would make it so that this ability is just like an auto attack reset that empowers your Q when in hammer form. So it just does bonus physical damage. Or it does bonus max damage as, um, as whatever the heck it's called, as like percent HP. Well, percent a bonus percent HP damage is physical damage. And I would keep his Q sort of the same. I guess it's... I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to word that one yet, so yeah. Lightning Field and Hyper Charge. Hammer Stance. Passive. Restore mana per strike. Active. Creates a shield... Uh, a field of lightning damage nearby, damaging nearby enemies for several seconds. Man, I just can't speak. Cannon Stance. Gains a burst of energy, increasing attack speed to maximum for several attacks. Okay, I actually meant to say his E. When his Q is paired with his E. I thought it was his W, but I was wrong. 
So his W just does like the lightning field around him when he is in hammer form, and he just gives him a burst of attack speed, which just kind of helps him a little bit when he is in attack form. But honestly, you really won't see that used all that often. <laughs> you will every now and then, but really not all that often. It's, like, it's something that you'll see a good amount in early game, but not late game. Um, Next we have his E, Thunder Blow and Acceleration Gate. Hammer Stance deals magic damage to an enemy and knocks them back a short distance. Okay, Cannon Stance. Deploys an acceleration gate, increasing the movement speed of all allied champions who pass through it. If Shock Blast is fired through the gate, the missile speed, range, and damage will increase. There, there's a bit too much of a bonus there for how easy his E is deployed. Um, Let's see. The video is broken. <laughs> the video is broken. Okay, let's see if we if we leave and come back. Shoot, where is he? There he is. <laughs> I almost clicked on skins there. There we go. You see how the gate just pops up instantly? That it it really doesn't have a a cast time. It just happens. See, that's where I think the problem is, because he'll throw out his E, and then he'll immediately kick click his Q, making it insanely difficult to dodge that ability. <laughs> so, what I think, again, then his alt is he just swaps before, between his two things. Hammer Stance transforms the Mercury Hammer into the Mercury Cannon, gaining new abilities and increased range. The first attack in this form reduces the target's armor and magic resist. Cannon Stance transformers the Mercury Cannon into the Mercury Hammer, gaining new abilities and increased armor and magic resist. The first attack in this form deals additional magic damage. So, I do think thing... Uh, <sighs> eh, let's, let's go from the beginning again. Okay, so I did say that this is stupid earlier, but to be truthful, it's really not that bad. It's not like a big part of his kit. I don't necessarily like the fact that he can move through minions, but at the same time, I think it is acceptable because it, only, it doesn't really last all that long. And the movement speed is annoying, especially when he has a lot of movement speed already. But yet again, it, it, overall, it is acceptable. Then, his Q comes along. So, to the skies, as I think, I don't think it should be to the skies, I think it should be he just gains an increased, uh, maybe like his next auto attack does bonus damage and it becomes AoE, like he gets like a TM at passive, because as you can see, like his Q regularly is already AoE when he kills the two minions, yep, but then I, I think that it should, um, ju like he shouldn't dash to someone, it should just be his next auto attack type deal. Um, now I do understand that, yes, it will also do bonus damage if it's his first auto attack changing, because in here it says, like, the first ad uh, attack in this form deals additional magic damage, so yes, it could be a problem there where it might just, it might change things up, but then at the same time, he'll still need to run over to his target. Okay, then we have, um, the other part of his Q, which is Shock Blast. Honestly, Shock Blast, as it is, is perfectly fine. I think it is completely okay the way Shock Blast works, works as it is. Okay, his W. I am fine with him gaining back mana because, to be truthful, his abilities do cost a good chunk of mana. And you'd be surprised how quickly you run out of mana as Jace if you are not utilizing this passive. Now, if you are utilizing this passive, then it actually works very, very well and you can keep going for a long time. Then there, uh, and then the electric field, it does do a reasonable amount of damage, like it does more than you expect it to do, but at the same time it's not a ton and it's not overpowered, it, it's completely fine the way it is. And the burst of attack speed for his other stance is, is completely fine, as I said. It's really, it's something that you will notice every now and then when he activates, but I would say you use it more for farming than you really do for damage, because Jace is a burst a bursting bruiser, which is why I think there's a bit of a problem, where he will just, sh he'll you he'll be in um, cannon form, and all he'll use is his E and his Q, and that's it. 
Now, depending on the situation, he might use his W and try to continue to auto-attack you from a distance. But I would say of the majority, the majority of situations, he'll use his E as Q. He'll use his alt again um, to swap back to hammer form, where then he will Q, W, and E you in his hammer form, which by that time you will either be right next to dead or dead. Well, then he'll just need to auto-attack you right after that, which is why I think that there should be a little bit of a discrepancy there. Um, so honestly, I think that his W is fine, and that a lot of times you really just see him, like, he'll have a decent-sized minion wave, and he'll just fire at it and destroy it. Then we have his hammer, Thunder Blow, or Acceleration Gate. Now, Thunder Blow, I think, is completely fine. It is his really only form of CC, because it does smack you in a direction. Um, I think it can be a little bit annoying when, like, out of nowhere you're just smacked in a random, like, you think you're out of range, and then the next thing you know you're just blooped over to the side, because it is an auto attack that it CCs you, but it, it's just, you know, there are some times when auto attacks, like, they really should not have gone off, or the auto attack started to go off because of the range, and because he didn't cancel it or anything like that, it just, it fully goes through. And you can't really stop it, which is I, I do don't necessarily like that fact, but at the same time, it, it's just something that need is going to happen with all auto attacks. So uh, it's just the way that it's going to be. But then there is the acceleration gate. Now I am fine with the increase in the movement speed of him and all of his allies, but I am not fine with the bonuses that it gives to the shock blast that comes from his Q. It, it, it is too much of a bonus. Like, there he gains the movement speed, and then boom. Now, I'm fine with the increased range. Uh, I am fine with some of the increased damage. I am not fine with all of the increased damage and the increase in this, its speed. I think that his Shock Blast should either not increase in damage at all and just increase in speed, or it should not increase in speed at all and just increase in damage. And, like, the range should be increased no matter what. Now, I personally believe, to go with the theme of the Acceleration Gate, that it's just going to accelerate things. Like, it, it's, it's not called Overpowered Gate, <laughs> or Power Gate, where you walk through it and your next auto attack or something is increased in damage. It just increases the movement speed of things. So I would have it increase the range uh, and the attack speed, but still have it do the same amount of damage. Because I honestly, I think that for a bruiser, which yes, I will say he is not that tanky of a bruiser. He is like the least tanky of like all the bruisers, but he does have a such a good burst that it doesn't really matter. To where he'll he'll just he'll put up a gate fire it and you'll get hit and you'll just you'll just disintegrate if you are any squishy champion if you are an adc or a uh, mid lane or a mage or an assassin and you get hit with an accelerated gate q you are probably missing a good 80 percent of your health bar and i don't think that is okay <laughs> especially for how difficult it is to drop it or to dodge it because of how fast it goes i do think that that is a bit of a problem um I will say he is reasonably difficult, so at the same time, it, it is, like, reasonable for what he is capable of doing. But at the exact same time, I just, I, I think it, it is really stupid <laughs> how much damage it does. So I would just have it increase the range and attack speed, but not the damage if he shoots his Q through it. Um, and then, honestly, I, I really, I don't agree with him having a ton of stuff on his, like, a ton of passives on his alt. I agree with the increase in range and the first auto attack in each area, but I do not think that he should gain bonus armor and magic or this, just because what often will happen is he will, he will, um, activate his alt and then fire at you, or he'll do his E and his Q in uh, ranged form, firing a shock blast at you, hitting you, chunking your HP. He'll then swap over to his other form, and he'll just charge at you. Like, the, the electric gate will still be up, meaning he'll gain his bonus movement speed. Then he'll gain 40% more bonus movement speed from swapping to his other form from his passive. And then he'll be able to get in range to Q you, which, as I said, is the, the dash. 
So I just I don't think that um, that that's it's completely fine. I really think that he needs a decent sized nerf, just because as it is right now, he just does too much damage and he's too difficult to deal with. Um, I will admit that as I said, like he is like the squishiest of all the bruisers that exist, but at the same time, he is capable of one shotting much faster than anyone else. Like, I would either change the type of champion he is and make him an assassin or a marksman. Um, I don't really think a marksman would work, so I'd say an assassin. And then, like, lower his base armor, magic resist, even more than, and, like, his HP even more than it already is. Or I would make all of these individual changes to make him just lesser. I think his Q is fine the way it is, except for in his hammer form. I think that it should just be an, an increased auto attack because he's already gaining bonus movement speed to run at you. He does not need a gap closer to further the, to further that process. He really does not. Um, he or then his W honestly is completely fine the way it is. It, I wouldn't make any changes whatsoever. His E, I think that his in hammer form it's fine, and it should just be changed in his range form. Where upon his shock blast going through it, it only increases the attack speed and rage, but does not increase the damage. And with his alt, I would not give him the bonus magic resist and armor, but I would keep the bonuses on the first auto attack after each thing. Then we have his skins. So Jace's first skin is full metal Jace. I think it's okay, but I would say it's basically like, it's just, I, it's exactly as the name suggests. It's just him in like a metal, metallic suit and nothing more. This skin, I will say, is really nice. Debonero, Jace does look really good with, like, the whole suit, the Jace's aspect. I think that the hammer itself could look a little bit better, to be quite honest, but I, I would think that it is fine the way it is. Forsaken Jace, I think, is a very cool skin. Um, in general, I would say that it, it shines a lot more in-game than it does uh, in, like, the clip art here, but I, I think overall it, it is a good skin. Um, Jace Bright Hammer. Yet again, this is actually a really nice skin. It just the way that everything looks is just glowing and really nice and just looks really good. Um So I, I would guess I'd give his full metal skin just just five out of ten. Just really nothing that nice. Uh Debonero eh, I'll give it a seven. I'll give Forsaken an eight, and I'll give Jace Sprite uh an eight as well. I think that this looks slightly better than Forsaken, and I think Forsaken looks slightly better than Debonero, to be quite honest. They've only gone up when it comes to his skins. Like even his base skin, like they just they're just going upward from there. Hopefully they continue that pattern. <laughs> but yeah, that has been Jace, the Defender of Tomorrow. A bit of an interesting name. But um yeah. So I hope that you um enjoyed if you agree or disagree with anything that i have said please leave it down in the comments below i will gladly have any constructive criticism at all i will gladly i don't know i don't want to say argue but debate with someone on any of these things if you have your own ideas for how jay should be if you have a full-on rework you know go ahead leave it down below i will gladly like do the same for you constructive criticism say i don't know this might be overpowered with this specific item it could be really stupid something along that line um so yeah and another thing if you happen to be a riot member and or know any riot members Please look at this series, look at like all the suggestions that I've made, look at all this stuff, look at the, the champions that I said that I have ideas for in the past, and you know, you just uh, contact me, you know, come, come, you know just uh, contact me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to thank you all very much for watching this A to Z mini rubric, my thoughts, ideas, and changes, and I will bid you all adieu. Goodbye.